Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. A little talks to the NHL. That is pretty much what our YouTube has become. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are pretty much going to rebrand our YouTube as from Milwaukee to Nashville talks to the NHL because that's pretty much all we do on there. So that's what we're doing. So, hello, welcome to the rebrand. <laughs> Um, we're going to start you with the uh, trade deadline. I know I picked, jump on it. Well, you can't. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff in this video fairly quickly. So folks, hopefully you're along for the ride. Um, we're going to start with a team who potentially could be a buyer, but at the same time may have a problem being a buyer. So we're going to start now with the Minnesota Wild, who are currently sitting in third place in the Central after their win over the Bruins. Um, big question mark on them is not this season, but next season when the 2.3 million cap hit goes to 6.3 and next year goes to 7.3 for two years. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're paying them 1.6 mil after that for 10 years. So they have 1.6 mil cap locked up till 2029. Yikes. That's guaranteed cap locked up. Right. Um, not only that, but you got to pay guys like Andrew, Alex Golgoski, who's a UFA at the end of the season, who has a 35 plus no movement clause. Uh, you have. Matt Zuccarello, six million, no movement clause. Kevin Fiala is an RFA. You get that with arbitration. Ooh. So there's going to be that one. I doubt he takes a pay cut. So Fiala may be on the move. Dwight Dwar Connor is up, and so is Nick Boopstad. It's not counting your AHL players like Victor Rask, uh, Mitchell Caffey. <laughs> Nick Sweeney, Kyle Rao, Dominic Turgeon, Brandon Bat Braddock, Nolan Stevens, uh, Fedor Gordelov, uh, Kevin Kuzman, and Jan Lozat, as well as Zane McIntyre and Derek Barabo. And, and ooh, ee, wrong one. Sorry, folks. And they have to sign their rookies, which they have one, one, two, three that have to be done by June. June one, or they could re enter the draft. Uh, Philip Johansson, Simon Johansson, or Pavel Novak. All of them must be signed by June one. Okay. So there's some some big question marks there of what to do with Minnesota. Uh, yeah. Minnesota definitely has its 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 issues um, long term as far as cap penalty problems. Um, right now they sit with nine million in current cap space. Their projected cap space is two point two million. That ain't gonna get you much as far as a great player on um, teams with Littleton or no cap. Uh, the Flyers, Toronto, St. Louis, LA, Florida, Calgary, Colorado. <coughs> All under a million. Uh, Bruins have a million, Islanders have two, Sharks have five. Coyotes have six, Kraken have seven, Devils have seven, Rangers have six, uh, Prayers have ten, along with the Red Wings and the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Ottawa Senators, and then the Ducks and Sabres are at 13. They are, everyone is above the cap ceiling, or cap floor, the cap floor. So everyone's officially above the cap floor. Yeah. Um, so looking at it from a perspective of this, okay? Uh, Buffalo, sellers, definitely. 
Ducks. That's a good question. What would you think the Ducks' best situation is right now? The Ducks? The Ducks. The Ducks currently, I, I, I'll see if I can help you a little bit here. Okay. <clears throat> the Ducks currently sit outside the wild card by three points. I say they're probably going to stay where they're at. <clears throat> they're also two, six, and two in their last 10. I could see them selling. Going, ah, this year's not our year. And just Maybe. building around the young core that they have. Yes, folks, we can vape on this one. For those of you who watch our Facebook channel. <laughs> um, this show is unsponsored, unfiltered, and we do not care. <laughs> is no way a representation of uh, the team that we cover on Facebook. So that's a that's a that thing. Um, do you think you could see Anaheim maybe moving in a, a couple more pieces? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it right now. But Anaheim currently has one first, one second, no third, no one fourth, two fifths, one sixth, and a seventh round pick. They have Nashville sixth round currently. How did they end up with that? Ah, Corbinian Holzer comes back to bite us in the butt. Um, I could see them making a move. Let's take a look at their contract situations here. Uh, Ricard Raquel, UFA, Nick Deloria, UFA, uh, Buddy Robinson, UFA, Seb Carrick, UFA, Vinny Letary, UFA, Hempus Lindholm will be a UFA, and Andre Sutter will be a UFA. I, I could see them moving Lindholm. I could see them moving Raquel because those will fetch. Um, but beyond that, I don't see much. Um, their injured reserve is Ryan Kessler, uh, Jacob Silverberg, Ryan Getzlaff, Max Jones, and Sam Steele, um, as well as buried uh, Jacob Larson's contract. And John Manson has they have uh, two million in dead cap. Their buyout, they're paying Corey Perry to two million still. So cap, they're not in trouble. But, you know, how do I put it? Uh, I, I could see this team team making a couple moves. Who to who? I do not know. But I could see the Ducks potentially being sellers. Ottawa seller. Uh, they currently sit in the East in, well, one spot out of last. I could see them selling. What do they have to sell? That's another, you know, question. All right. Uh, Chris Tardy, Zachary Sanford, those guys aren't going to fetch much. Um, Paul Nicholas and Tyler Ennis as well. I, I could see them potentially <laughs> I see nothing for them where they're gonna, you know, right. Where they're gonna come out of that, you know, a winner. I mean, if they get picks out of it, yeah, they're a winner, but you know what I mean? Right. Columbus. Uh, Columbus is in an interesting position because Columbus is one spot out of the wild card, but you're 11 points back. So <clears throat> it's a possibility um, that they sell uh, Patrick Lydays a US or RFA. 
Um, I can see them potentially moving like Max Dome. Yeah. Maybe Brendan Gons and, and Dean Kukin after that. Maybe Yotis Corpusalo to somebody looking for a backup. Right. Other than that, I really don't see anybody. Uh, Alexander Weinberg has a buyout. That's a cap hit. That's, I mean, 441000 not going to hurt you. So, um, I, uh, uh, how do you put it? Um, conservative sellers. They're not going to completely sell the farm. They're probably waiting for free agency that they're going to buy. But you understand where I'm going. Detroit. Uh, Vladislav Namstikov, Sam Gagne, Nick Letty, Mark Stahl, who has a no movement clause, so that eliminates that. Troy Stecker and Tomas Grice. Um, I, I, I don't see them making much of a splash, but I think Dallas is uh, Detroit's good where they are. Yeah. We're going from the bottom up, so we're kind of going by the people with the most cap. Nashville. Nashville is in a weird, kind of wonky position. Barring some astronomical breakdown by this team, long term. I'm, I'm not talking like a, you know, you know, Two game losing streak or something. I'm talking right now, they're sitting <coughs> tied with Minnesota. So, pretty much, <coughs> and two points away from third, uh, second place in the division. So, I mean, the Preds are sitting nice where they're within grabbing reach of each team in their division to get up to out of, or out of the wild card position. Right. Um, you know, and 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 that leaves them in a in a kind of interesting position. Um, I could see them making a move. Uh, their it, their needs. Uh, I wouldn't know what to say their needs are because Nashville's need right now is experience. Yeah. And you only get that from play. Right. In the playoffs. So I think that Nashville may just go get a veteran, either a defenseman or forward, you know, or both. You know, try and go find somebody, two teams who are willing to trade with you, give you somebody fairly uh, reliable, can play, and, and is a veteran, and, and, and doesn't mind eating up minutes to take a little bit off of you. Um, I wouldn't also be surprised to see Nashville make little minor trades for the minor right. league because they do have a history of stocking the cabinet during the trade deadline. They love doing that. New York Rangers. The New York Rangers are in second place in the Metro. Um, have no, pretty much no, I mean, they have, they're at 81 points um, by division. They got Pittsburgh and Washington right behind them. But I can see them buying, to be honest. They got six mil. Um, Seattle selling, Arizona selling, San Jose selling. Those are all simple. <coughs> we know it for a fact. Oh boy, I see TSN on my phone. Did uh, something happen that we need to know about? Um, the Wild, like I said, they're in that interesting position where they need to buy, but don't really have the cap room to do so. Right. The New York Islanders. The New York Islanders are in the probably the worst position they could be in. 
They are at 57 points. The second wild card spot is at 76 points. I'd have to say Sellers. Probably, yeah. Well, if if not maybe Sellers, but conservative Sellers to to get some pieces to build around in the future. Right. Yeah. I guess I could go that route. Uh, Boston, they have no cap. Colorado already bought slash sold. Um, Calgary, they bought in already, getting Cali Yarncroft today with, for a second in 2022, a third in 2023, and a seventh round in 2024. Um, uh, also today, uh, the Florida Panthers uh, get Ben Sherratt in exchange for forward Ty Similac, a first round pick in 2023, a fourth round pick in 2024. Um, the floor, the Panthers also exchanged uh, forward Frank Vertanio to the Rangers for an exchange for the later of the either the Rangers own fourth selection or the Winnipeg Jets fourth selection so the latest draft pick in that round <coughs> compared to the two teams whatever they're picking um interesting how some of that stuff works um the LA Kings they are buyers but have no cap room All right they're currently sitting second in the Pacific um Panthers already, like I said, made their moves. Uh, St. Louis, there's not much they can do there. Uh, Toronto, they need all the help they can get, but I'm sorry, they're not going to get it. Pittsburgh's another one of those where they're they're just going to have to stay pat. There's a lot of teams up top where, like, I mean, Montreal, you're sellers and you're at $92 million in the cap. Vegas. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me get to what Carolina. Carolina is uh, one million in cap currently. I can see. Well, with the extension that they're doing, they're going to be um, extending <coughs> um, uh, Konetny, just Barry Konetny. Um, for for a while, uh, we'll be seeing how that turns out eventually. But Carolina is sitting at first in their division. Washington, I, I couldn't see them making any moves. Philly sellers, Chicago sellers, Dallas sellers, uh, Vancouver. I could see them staying pat. Uh, Edmonton staying pat. Winnipeg staying pat. Tampa staying pat. Uh, Vegas. I'm not like I said. Vegas is one of those interesting situations. Vegas is remaining. They are going to be fifteen million over the cap. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of their big cap money guys are signed through the next three years, including Jack Eichel, who's a $10 million cap hit. You got Petrangelo, $8 million, Theodore, $8 million, $5 million. I mean, you can afford the cap penalties, but you've got Robin Leonard on injured reserve, Morgan, or Riley Smith on injured reserve, Brian, Braden McNabb on injured reserve. Um, Matthias Yanmark on injured reserve and Brett Howden on injured reserve. Your long-term injury reserve is Mark Stone, Alec Martinez, and <coughs> Jake Bischoff. Um, I mean, and a lot of these guys, big money guys, no movement cause. Right. So, I mean, what do you do? I mean, they are literally, it, 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 it's, it's looking like it's going to be one of them weird, wonky. Everybody's going to be looking for cap space. Right. So 
teams with a lot, and I'm sorry for going off camera, but you know, with the uh, uh, with the trade deadline looming. Uh, 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 uh. Welcome to the party, Flames. All right, um, what? Did I miss something? What do you mean? The project just tweeted now, one hour till puck drop. That's weird. Did they just whoopsie it? Um, congratulations also to Mark Giordano, uh, 1,000 NHL games. So as I said, the, we were doing a little bit of a trade tracker by ourselves. Today has been quite busy. Yesterday was too. Um, yesterday, the uh, Minnesota Wild acquired Tyson Yost from the Colorado Avalanche for Nico Sturm. Um, then the Colorado Avalanche on the 14th acquired uh, Josh Manson from the Ducks for defenseman prospect Drew Healison and a second round pick in the 2023 draft. <coughs> Since then, it's been relatively quiet. Yeah. We will see what happens going forward. Uh, Um, the uh, I'm going to take a look here and see what the hockey world has to say before we sign off. Hopefully y'all updated this. All right, the uh, we're gonna go through this and see if me and John can depict where these guys go. Oh man! All right, so Ben Sherat, he's off the list. Callie oh. Aircrock is off the list. All right, Claude Giroux, he has an eight million dollar cap hit. Where do you think he's going? I know the heavy favorite for a while was Colorado. I don't think that's the case anymore with everything Colorado has been doing. Um, so honestly, I don't know. Well, I could see a team like, um, I, I don't see them trading inside their own division. division. Okay. Um, I could see him going out West. Yeah. To like LA, possibly. I mean, there's yeah. maybe a way LA could trim cap. Um, right. I mean, uh, 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 let me just, like I said, circle back to uh, Cap Friendly here, because Cap Friendly is such a wonderful website. For those of you in the world of hockey, you know this. Um, teams that I could afford him are, are, are dime a dozen. I mean, I could see Nashville doing it. Do we have what we do we have to get? Do we want to give up what it's going to cost for a rental? No. 
because I don't think this team is a cup contender even with it. Yeah. Uh, Hampus Lindholm, um, $5.2 million cap hit. I could see a team, any team right now, taking a stab at that. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Chikrin, um, as much as he's worth a pretty penny, that's Mm -hmm. a little dirty because he's had, hasn't had a healthy season since his rookie year. Right. So that does play into it. Uh, Ricard Raquel, $3.8 million cap hit. I could see him easily being traded. Uh, Mark Giordano, uh, the captain of the Seattle Kraken, um, $6.7 million cap hit. He falls under that veteran that I was talking about. Yeah. You know, he just played his thousandth game, but that falls under that veteran, you know? Yeah. Um, Jake DeBrusque, I-, I could see a team taking a stab at him. Yeah. 15 goals, 25 points, and 55 games. <clears throat> That's not great for a 25 year old player, but I mean, sometimes you're just not meant for that system. Um, so let's just jump real quick to the big elephant in the room. Who's trading for Marc Andre Fleury? Mm-hmm. In a weird note, I could see Colorado doing it. Yeah, maybe. I could also see Minnesota. For that, for sure, number one starter. Right. Um, Beyond that, I don't know. It all depends what the Blackhawks want for him. Max Dunn, five point three UFA, nothing less. Um, I, I I just don't see what he has um, available. <coughs> Obviously, you know you're in that interesting injury situation. Um, the other part is um, Shea Weber. Montreal wants out from that cap hit. Mm. 7.9. It's weird. And hear me when I say this. But I could see Buffalo pulling the trigger. Yeah. Because Buffalo has a lot of assets and a lot of cap space. Yeah. And they're going to have a lot more when this year's over. Not to mention you add in you're out. Well, let's take a look here. Your reserve list for them. You have a ton of high end, very skilled talent yeah. that could easily find itself like Owen Power teamed up with Shea Weber, a young player, you know, mm. Darlene, another one of those guys, you get a good, you know, player in the next draft, you can find yourself definitely, you know, <coughs> you know, yeah.
Um, you, you can find that position. Uh, the other one, um, Buffalo's cap space. Um, I can see teams taking a stab at Timothy Lilligrand of Toronto. He's a 22-year-old 20, young defenseman. He's still wait, he could still go through waivers. Chara is another one I could see guys taking a stab at. Yeah. Philip Zadina is another one from Detroit. I could see guys taking a stab at. He's young. He hasn't had a chance to prove himself, and Detroit is not giving it. Um, Corpusalo and Carl Valjabaca, backup goaltenders, at, at, Al, Alexander Gregoriev is another backup goaltender, Carson Soucy, Tampa's first rounder, and Toronto's first rounder are out there as well. Um, Arizona's cap space, um, Jack McBain, which I don't know what that's all about there. NCAA stats. Okay, Jack McBain is a um, <coughs> young player, and he has six games played with 19 goals. Um, I don't know. He's in the NCAA. That mm -hmm. don't always, that don't always, <coughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. But on here on this list, there is nothing on here for Nashville at all. As far as, as far as what I'm looking at for that organization, for a lot of these organizations, I, I, I just wouldn't be surprised to see them stay pat. Right. Um, let me also inform you that we will be dual live on that day is, or doing dual shows that day as well. Um, I think we'll be live here on YouTube at that day. Um, barring Nashville doesn't make a move. If Nashville doesn't make a move, we won't end our feed. Obviously we'll give you all the info first before leaving. Um, and then we'll come back after doing our part for our main source of our shows, but we're just adding more to our list of things that we do. We have a lot of fun stuff coming for you soon, if we could ever find the time to do it. <laughs> uh. <coughs> What's that running joke? It's a long off season. <laughs> yeah. And we run out of ideas after a while. Yeah. All righty, folks. So with that, um, just looking at that, uh, um, I mean, uh, Brendan Hagel is one of those interesting situations. Brendan Hagel has a $1.5 million cap hit, has uh, 55 games played, 21 goals, and 37 assists for the for the Blackhawks. But I don't see them trading inside their division unless they're getting a first round pick out of it. All right. So it all comes down to who is really willing to move and shake. Yeah. And it's a it's a, it's got to be <laughs> From what I heard from Nashville's GM in the in the morning thing that he was on uh, their uh, their podcast or their ESPN uh, this morning. Um, one of the big things I I, I got out of him was uh, uh, you know it's got to be um um you know something that. is friendly to both. So, I mean, 
like I said, I'm just trying to scrounge whatever I can here. Um, from what I've seen, I think that we are done for the night as far as trades go. Jack Roslovic is on the trade block again. Yeah. Um, a player on this list that really hasn't been talked much about is uh, P.K. Subban, who, who I could see getting moved. Uh, John Klingberg's another one of those. He's a UFA. Um, let's see what's up with John Klingberg there in, in Dallas and see what the situation looks like there, you know? Yeah. Uh, because John Klingberg, assistant captain, $4.25 million cap hit. That's already, Most of that's already paid by this point. You also have Ryan Suter there for six point, or 3.6 with a ma. Full no movement clause. Esselin done with a full no movement clause. Vero Huskinen is on IR. Ben Bishop LTIR. He is retired. Anton Hudobin buried cap for two years. Modified no trade clause. Submit a four team late trade list with Hudobin with a hip injury. He is out for the year. Um, Let's be real. I have. Absolutely no clue what Dallas does. But I will say that it'll all be a very interesting trade deadline coming up. I'm looking forward to it. See you guys probably a little bit tomorrow as far as this is concerned because every day lately it's been two here, three there, two here, through there. It's always like that leading up to the deadline and then you're sitting there in front of the TV on the deadline going all day. Just somebody do something. Anybody. So it's just one of those. And then the last minute and there's like 20 trades that go through and we're all waiting for the league to like tell us that they've all went through. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I remember that with the Wayne Simmons trade with Nashville my first year doing this. <laughs> I was live and the trade happened and I saw it and I go, Nashville just traded for Wayne Simmons. He, and and, and uh, Chris was here for, Chris was on that one and he goes, I didn't see that one. And I just go, oh, I, it just hit the bottom of the bottom ticker. It was, it was just there. And then come to find out it, it, it did happen. It was just one of the, um, so we'll we'll see what happens, but it, it ought to be an interesting offseason or interesting trade deadline. Um, me and John will be here pretty much every day until the weekends up. I think our only day off is Friday, and uh, only way you're going to be seeing us is if, like I said, this yet again. Uh, well, you'll be seeing this again Saturday, uh, possibly live. So, uh, and uh, Sunday, um, Sunday, if you see nothing by 9 p.m. from us, you're not going to see anything. So, just a fair warning there. Um, so, uh, thank you guys for watching and see you guys uh, tomorrow, possibly, or Friday or Saturday or, you know, it's one of those, whatever the, I, I, we're not going to jump up here and, and, and just go one trade. It's just, you know, unless it's Blockbuster. Unless it's Blockbuster, then I'll move. But obviously, uh, we'll, we'll get into all that and um, talk about that stuff. And, and then we'll talk about what's going on and what's going to happen to these teams moving forward. So. Right.
like I said, we'll see you guys as soon as uh, we have more on the trade. Uh, more trades, more news. Oh, by the way, congrats to Ovi passing Yager. By the way, Yager coming out of retirement to chase Ovi now. <laughs> mm. <coughs> see y'all later.